When I was 14, hearing the Red of Spring changed my life. That was followed pretty rapidly by hearing the Fifth Brandenburg. And that was followed pretty quickly by hearing Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, and drummer Kenny Clark. And started going down to Birdland to hear Miles Davis and Bud Powell and, you know, Bebop. So all of that really was like, you know, our junior high school, high school life. At Cornell, I did study music with William Austin, who was a really first-rate first, first musician and a great musicologist. In his music appreciation class, he played this recording of a Balinese gamelan. This is probably on 78 records. I thought, like, man, what is that? That's really beautiful. What is that? But the real clincher uh, in terms of Africa was, as a student at Berio, in 1963, we, we the graduate students, were taken by him, Luciano Berio, to Ojai, which was, you know, the festival Stravinsky set up. And they had the visiting dignitaries of the day, and they included Gunther Schiller, who was at the time beginning his history of jazz in America. And he said, I have discovered this book that's the first accurate transcription of West, uh, Ghanaian drumming. I, I looked at it and I thought, you know, this is, this is a, you know, basically patterns in subdivisions of what we would call 12, but superimposed so that their downbeats did not coincide. The bell is the timekeeper, but everybody comes in as they, they are supposed to do, which is not necessarily on the downbeat. This uh, made me feel like, well, it's great to see it in a book, and, uh, but it would be great to go and actually play it. So I went to Africa with something that I had found that was definitely mine that still wanted me to, to go there. I was the 14-year-old drummer getting a pat on the back saying, yes, you know, stay with that, stay with the percussion. You know, this is like late 60s, early 70s. You've got the Beatles with sitars in the rock band. You, you've got Ravi Shankar actively touring. Everybody and his brother's interested in Indian music. But what I really felt was, as a composer, what I can learn is from the structure of this music, not the sound of it. So the fact of the matter is it's something followed by itself at some musical interval, some rhythmic interval, and you tell me what it sounds like. That's a very powerful idea, I think.